We know the value of the forest. This is a forest that stores 19.5 gigatons of carbon, a standing forest that is worth close to 500 billion United States dollars. 56 years after declaring itself free from British rule, the South American country of Guyana is in the crosshairs of the climate change threat. Roughly 90% of its population lives on the Caribbean coast, many in the capital city of Georgetown, which sits seven feet below sea level and relies on drainage canals to remain habitable. According to the U.S. National Ocean Service, the warming Caribbean waters are projected to rise 8 to 10 inches in the next 30 years. In 2015, exploration crews from ExxonMobil found what would prove to be billions of barrels of crude at the bottom of Guyana's share of the Caribbean Sea, about 120 miles from the shore. It did not take oil for me to understand the potential of our country. But what was always lacking was a type of resources that is critical to aid the transformation of the economy, to aid the infrastructure development. Since the first oil well was drilled three years ago, Guyana's economy has become the fastest growing in the world. It is producing about 360,000 barrels a day and expecting to reach 580,000 next year. The money is funding much needed new roads and housing in one of the Western Hemisphere's poorest nations. We have a reality. Who is going to pay? to ensure that we have the type of mitigation and adaptation measures to prevent the catastrophic type of flooding that rising sea level can bring. We have to build this infrastructure. Where is the revenue going to come from? And even now, as we are pursuing oil and gas economy, we have made it very clear that the development of Guyana will be done along a low carbon development path. But weaknesses in the new petrol state are being exposed. Its contract with Exxon gives the company unusual advantages, a bigger share of revenue than normal, with fewer tax requirements. Guyana's plan, using fossil fuels to fund a complete transition to renewables, might be setting a trend. Other developing countries also seek to exploit such reserves, even as high-polluting developed nations beg them not to. People say, oh, we must have no new development. But if we take out the new development, what are we doing? Aren't we creating a monopoly for those who are already in it? Those who have benefited from decades upon decades of proceeds from it? For now, the world will watch and recall that since the Kyoto Protocol was drafted in 1997, developed countries have pledged to contribute billions of dollars to help poorer nations adapt to climate change. However, very little of that money has materialized.